everybody. Welcome, 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 welcome. I am your androgynous Android game show host from the future, Nathan Blades. Uh, welcome once again to another fabulous episode of the Tabletop Mentorship Program Speaker Series. Uh, we invite fabulous and talented folks from the tabletop industry to share their insights and answer all your questions roughly in one hour. This afternoon, uh, we have our fantastic guest, guest, tabletop content creator and streamer, Benita Kaur. But before I welcome her to the show, I'd like to say thank you to our sponsor of the show. Thank you so much to Jeff Engelstein and New Voices in Gaming. Uh, the New Voices Scholarship helps innovative, innovative and diverse new people to the tabletop gaming industry with funding for admission and travel to events like the Tabletop Network Conference. Uh, you can find out more about the New Voices in Gaming initiative at newvoicesingaming.org. And that will be in the YouTube chat for you. Right. Uh, we also have fantastic patrons. Uh, thank you to uh, three special people of our Patreon. Uh, Eric Reese, Curtis Far Fry, and Angela Belsol. Thank you very, very much, each and every one of you. Uh, if you would also like to support us on Patreon, uh, you can do so at patreon.com forward slash tabletop mentorship program, also in the YouTube chat. But enough about hyping us up. I'm here to hype up our very special guest. Please, everybody, give a rapturous round of applause for our guest today, Benita Kaur. Hi, Hello, thank hello. you. That was a wonderful introduction. Hi, everyone. My name is Benita. How are you doing, Nathan? <laughs> oh, I'm doing fabulous, thank you. Uh, with our uh, second stream, I am now more confident <laughs> than before and much that's, better prepared. That's streaming, right? The more you do it, the more confident you feel, and that's all that matters. <laughs> <laughs> indeed, indeed. So why don't you give us the, uh, the top line of the stuff you do and the work that you create? Uh, sure. So, you know, my name is Benita Huja, uh, sorry, Benita Kaur, and um, I am a Twitch streamer and tabletop content creator. Um, and when Mike and Grace asked me, like, you know, you know, you did this huge uh, charity stream, which I'll get more into later. Would you like to um, talk about how to use your platform for good? And I was interested because I think that's such an important point because, you know, people might originally follow me for board games or just like content. But, you know, I'm more than that. You know, I, there's issues that I care about. Um, there's causes that I want to support. And I think that like games don't exist in a vacuum. And I think the causes I support and believe in color, how I view games. And I think it's like, you know, I'm a whole person. I think it's important to talk about that. Um, so, oh yes, hello Mojo, hello Grace. Uh, <laughs> and so I really want it to be an interactive presentation. I am gonna go over like some things today, um, but if anyone has any questions, more than happy to answer any. Um, but just to like give you an overview of what I did personally. Um, so as you know, a few months ago, India's COVID crisis was really, really, really bad. I'm Indian and every day it just felt like someone I knew, family members, my uncle got COVID, um, like two uh, great uncles got it and passed away. And it was just you know, I just felt so helpless and I felt like I couldn't do anything. You know, obviously we weren't allowed to go over there. Um, people were being turned away at the hospital. My mom's uncle, so my great uncle, um, he went to the hospital but was turned away because he's too old. And that's heartbreaking, you know, mm -hmm. because I understand, like, I guess they have to make those decisions because they're only limited beds. But, like, it's just such a terrible, terrible decision to make. Mm -hmm. Um, so he, he did pass away and then, um, we found out that like, you know, they had to call around for a crematorium because in India you're, um, you're cremated and, um, we, we, they found a crematorium like an hour and a half away. They picked his body up and drove him to the crematorium only to find out that it was too, um, full, like they weren't oh. able to accept him. So they had to turn the ambulance around and for like almost like two days, his body was just in the home. And mind you, everyone in the house had COVID as well. And some mm. of them were in the hospital. And it was just like such a nightmare situation. And th these are like my family members. Um, I go to India every year, obviously outside of this year and last year. 
Um, so like, I know these people, like these are family and just, I just felt like so angry because it didn't feel like anyone was doing anything. Mm -hmm. Um, and it wasn't really getting media attention either. Like I felt like it wasn't getting media attention. So when I'm talking about media attention, I'm talking about the U S media attention because that's where I'm Mm -hmm. located. I do think other countries probably did a better job, but here we weren't doing such a great job. Mm -hmm. Um, and so you know, I stream two to three times a week. And um, on Sundays, I do a just chatting stream where we just go over the week, we do an exercise called roses, thorns and buds, where we talk about something good that happened, something bad that happened. And all I could honestly think about was like all the bad stuff that had been happening to my family. Mm. So we Anna Maria and I were just talking and I was like debating if I wanted to cancel my stream because I was just so upset about what was happening. And she's like, well, why don't we do a charity stream? Um, So me doing a charity stream um, is not uncommon. I had done it um, a month before for a food drive that was very successful. Um, So I was like, you know what? Let's do it. I just want to raise $2,500. Let's 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 do it. Like we had five days to plan it five days y'all we're like let's do it both of us have connections and like where we can make this happen and then it kind of just blew up and i and i do want to talk because it just seemed like it just kind of like blew up overnight but like there's so much work that went behind the scenes when you want to do something like this Mm -hmm. um so what what we started with like if we want to have an event i recommend don't do it five days in advance maybe plan it a few months in advance because it was very exhausting Mm -hmm. (laughs) i did not sleep for five days almost um so what you we just reached out to like honestly any contacts in the industry of being like would you like to do a sponsorship would you like to do a free game for a game giveaway and if so which countries which games etc cetera, etc cetera. so we had a very um like spreadsheets are your friends so we had long google drives and we would like point out who we've reached out to mm-hmm. if they reached back to us um if they want to do money sponsorship or game sponsorship if it's a game sponsorship which game and then which is the shipping location because that's really important when you're doing an international stream um so we reached out to them and we got really really good um responses back which was incredible and like over time we were able to do 50 game giveaways and like some really big ones as well because Mm -hmm. like we got some like really big packages. So we made it like exclusive, like you had to donate a certain amount of money to do that. Um, And so just like to get into the nitty gritty, because I think that's what you want to know, like how to actually do that. Um, So what we did incentivize tiers, which take a little bit more work, but you can get more money that way, which is the whole goal of a charity stream. So we said to even get into the giveaway you have to donate three dollars i think next time i would probably change that to five because five is like a good number to do but we just wanted it at least like more people to enter more money but i think mm-hmm. in hindsight i would have done five um and then for the um like we had eight we called them grand finale prizes and there were games that were like kind of expensive like for example title blades deluxe edition was one of them um we also put calico because calico is a wonderful game but it was very out of stock when i did this stream so like mm-hmm. people were selling it on the second hand board game market for a hundred plus dollars so they're like well we're gonna put that in the grand finale giveaway even though it's mm-hmm. not a hundred dollar game it's a great game not a hundred dollar game <laughs> um so we made those the grand finale prizes and we said you had to donate um i believe 25 dollars or more for that um, and if you donated 25, you were entered into the regular game giveaways and the grand finale giveaways. So what does that mean on the back end? In the back end, it meant that I had a crew of moderators that um, every time someone made a donation, they would write their name down and how much they did. So we had behind the scenes during the stream, they would be copying pasting from in the because I had put that in the notifications in my Twitch chat. So they would be copying pasting putting it in um, Excel spreadsheet. We had two Excel spreadsheets for like both types of giveaways. So like you can't do this yourself. You can't like, if you're going to do a charity stream, you can't like copy be pasting, making these spreadsheets like while you're also like entertaining. Correct. Like you gotta, you have to have 
someone on your team who like supports the cause that you're doing, but can also do that back end because it got like really chaotic, but we did get everyone in the end. And, and you know, everyone was very supportive being like, okay, we'll do the game giveaway soon. We're still updating names. Cause like the donations came flying in and like my moderator's like, Oh my God, we had to have so many names to copy and paste. Um, were you using a specific donation tracker or anything like that to kind of? So I actually, I was actually going to talk about that. I unfortunately was not able to do, I, because I only did it five days in advance. I mm. wanted to use Tiltify because Tiltify mm. is a platform, a donation platform that connects to Twitch. It's like made for Twitch. But the thing is your organization has to already be on Tiltify and the process mm. to add my organization, I tried to start the process, but I wasn't able to like finish it in time because they're like, mm. you know, it needs to come from like a, an email from them, even though like I had contacted the organization and we were working together and he was CC'd and on the emails. I understand why there's like, there were barriers in place, but I just wasn't able to like finish it in time. So what mm. I did is that it directly came to me and then I wrote out a check. So, but I would encourage people if there's a organization that you want, check out Tiltify. Um, they, obviously, they take a fee, but this way, the money goes directly to the organization, so you don't have to worry about that. Mm -hmm. um, it also does some of the uh, tracking for um, exactly and things like that. Exactly. Um, Grace says, tears are such an interesting way to encourage higher donations. Yes, it's because like people people are incentivized like you want to like kind of um like gratify your community a little bit you know if people are are nice they want to donate to charity but it's like i can donate to charity and possibly win a free game like that's that's good right like you, you that is encouraging people to possibly donate more like at, at a chance to like win that super out of print like calico game um you also want to make sure you are promoting your event because we had five days Again, encourage you, please don't, please don't do this to yourself. <laughs> um, but, you know, making graphics. When we started, sponsors started rolling in. I started, I made um, a banner saying, like, thank you to these sponsors so far. And that encouraged other companies to reach out to us because they also wanted to be on that banner. And they also wanted us to, like, say thank you to them, right? Like, that's good press. Like, for a cost of a game or a cost of $100, like, why wouldn't they want that good press? So, as we kept um, like tweeting about it, more and more companies reach, kept reaching out to us. Actually, at a certain point, I just said, I don't need any more games. We already got 50 game giveaways. But if you would like me to put your name on our Yoga Company logo, um, give me $100, right? So I started doing that, which I think is more than fair because um, I didn't need any more games at this point. <laughs> so... Um, Companies uh, started doing that. And what I did to, you know, because I wanted the companies who reached out to us and who gave money, gave games to be recognized. So I created a little um, running cube. Actually, one of my moderators, Amanda Panda, helped with that. Um, it was like all the logos and your logos would be up for like two seconds and it would spin through the 50 or so logos. And I just like put that up on my Twitch overlay. Um, mm -hmm. It's something so simple that you can do, but then it, it gives companies like, you know, it's it's a gratification, like seeing their logo on the stream overlay. Like it, it feels good, right? So I, when you are reaching out to sponsorships, like I would write in my emails, um, where this is the event that I'm raising money for. It's on this date. Um, your logo will be on my Twitch overlay. I will also put it on any promotional material, and I also will tweet about it. So if you like list A, B, C, D, like what you will do for the company, you're more likely to get sponsorships like if you just like gen like generically say like i will um like promote you like it, what does that mean right like you mm -hmm. it, it could mean so many things to like different people so i have a habit of saying i'm going to do a b and c d e um in in return for a sponsorship and i think that really helps when you like very clearly like list out what you're going to do mm -hmm. um so you reached out to sponsors. We got money. We had uh, like Excel spreadsheets with everyone's um, name on it. Um, I and then let's see what else. So when we started, when donations started coming in, and we had the game giveaway. So this is like post stream now. Then I had to go through all the winners 
And then I had to match them up with like game companies for like, mm. depending on like shipping location and like where they're located. Like for example, like some companies only shipped to North America while some were international. Thankfully we were able to match that up, but then I had to send an email to the publisher and to the winner. So, you know, it's a lot of work, mm. but so, so worth it. Like you know, it's a lot of behind the scenes work. Um, but really worth it. And so my event specifically, I was working with an organization that was um, raising money for oxygen concentrators. Um, yeah. And so each oxygen concentrator was $500. And so that's another one, like you want to put out a call to action. So my call mm -hmm. to action was, hey, I'm raising money for oxygen concentrators. So it wasn't like a nebulous like thing as like, Oh, India COVID relief. Like that's what I called it. But when you actually watch the stream, it's like we're very specifically raising money for oxygen concentrators. Every oxygen concentrator is $500. And that was helpful because every time people would donate, I would be like, we just raised more money for one more oxygen concentrator. Can we raise two more? Can we raise enough money for two more? So if you put out a call to action like that, it incentivizes people to, um, like donate more because they want to be like, oh my God, we're so close to raising like money for 10 oxygen concentrators. And that, that, that like helps like to keep the ball rolling essentially. Mm -hmm. So ultimately we were able to raise money, I believe for 34 oxygen concentrators, wow. which is very Amazing. cool. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I wanted to, I wanted to raise $2,500. Like that was my goal. I also thought it was a little too ambitious of a goal. Um, Anna Maria definitely had to push me to mm -hmm. do that goal. Cause I wanted to do like a, I wanted like, she wanted to do 5,000 and I put my foot down and I was like, no, like, I don't think that's, that's too high. We only had a few days to plan this. Like, let's just do $2,500. I was very much proven wrong. <laughs> um, and also, you know, I wanted to point out to, I also reached out to someone from board game geek and they asked them to stream the cast on their front page as well. Ah, mm -hmm. And I I do believe that helped, um, you know, and after some back and forth, they were more than happy to do it because it is ultimately for a good cause. And how it's related to board games is that we literally work with 50 different board game companies and it was like, and I'm technically a board game Twitch streamer. So like, that's how it was related to board games. And, mm -hmm. you know, that was wonderful because I think that did help draw in more people and draw in more donations. And um, someone from BGG like wrote a really lovely like news article the day before mm. the event as well to like draw more attention. And like, you know, you know, then we had like bigger creators than me, like participate and retweet. And like that helps mm. like retweets help. Um, and I also wanted to say like, you shouldn't just like promote your own events. Like I'm always, I always like do a retweet for like other charity events or other like, you know, diverse and inclusive events because that's so important because that's what I stand for. And mm -hmm. so when you support other people, they want to support you too. So I think that's very important community well. across different streamers and across the hobby, of course. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. Um, yes, James is saying world's best mods. So I, I'm going to shout out to the moderators because like I genuinely could not have done it without them because they were behind the scenes who were copying and pasting all the names who were mm -hmm. like putting in all the spreadsheets like they were amazing. So uh, I had Ben, I had Amanda Panda, I had Joe, I had um, Sass Queen. So those four were amazing. <laughs> I could not have done it without them. Um, James says, don't be afraid to ask companies or, or for direct and indirect donations. Yes. So like the worst thing they could say is no. Right. But mm -hmm. the best they could say is, uh, yes, for sure. Uh, Donald said, were all the donations directly through the stream or did you have people reporting in their own direct donations? Um, so just because I was a little worried cause we had so many game giveaways, um, and I didn't want to like go through people's like receipts and everything. So I said, if you want to donate prior to the stream, if you can't watch, that's fine. I'll put you in on our spreadsheet, but I did it. I did it directly through me. Um, again, if I'm going to want to do this again, I'm going to use Tiltify. Just make sure I have enough time to register the charity on Tiltify, but there's a lot of charities on there. I just, it's just, it's a little bit cleaner when, when you can donate directly. Mm-hmm. I mean, thankfully, I was able to track like how much we had, so I was able to write out a check. But I don't recommend that. 
it's just it's what I had to do because I had so little time and mm -hmm. um, I didn't want to give like there's obviously like platforms like you know like Red Cross and things like that but I didn't want to do that I very specifically wanted to work with a uh, organization located in India mm -hmm. because it's like on the grounds and that was what was most important to me yeah you want um, to donate to a charity that means something to you as well personally as exactly well as doing, of course mm -hmm. Um, and so, uh, James says charity board gamer does a lot of great charity work. Yes, that's true. So like, you know, other people have also like inspired me. So charity board gamer, literally in his name, he does charity. Um, Danny, uh, from Danny plays games. Like he, uh, periodically does, um, also charity streams. Um, there was just a charity stream by we're playing games, uh, that was, um, LGBTQ, uh, oriented, which I think did really, really well. So it's really nice to see like other people on like social media on Twitch, like using their platform for good, because I really think how interactive Twitch can be. I think it's a really fun way to raise money. So mm -hmm. outside of um, like this stream, I also did a stream to uh, raise money for a local food drive that I volunteer at. Mm -hmm. And so for that, I did different types of incentives. Um, I, I something called Bean Boozled. Uh, I actually have it with uh, me. Mm -hmm. um, and they're, they're, this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. <laughs> it's these super gross um, jelly beans where I said for, I think I said for $25 or something, I don't remember anymore, that if you, if you donate that much, um, I will eat one on camera. And people love me, but they also want to see me in pain, I guess. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so Such is the stream monster way. <laughs> That's yeah <laughs> though i will say james <laughs> donated money and he's like don't eat the jelly bean and then he left because he's like benita i can't watch you in pain like this <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> which was very very sweet um but yeah so that was like you know like not every street charity stream i'm gonna do is gonna be as big as the india covid stream it was just it was a lining of good timing like you know it's a lot of work i'm not always gonna want to reach out to 50 publishers and like coordinate mm -hmm. all of that so for like smaller streams having incentives is great like for example i said if i reach, raise 200 dollars, i'll do a cooking stream if i raise mm -hmm. like 400 dollars, i'll do a stream with amari akil who is amazing and if you don't follow him uh you should he does like uh, uh what is it hoop gods and uh, rap ah. gods yes mm -hmm. and so we he came on my stream last week and that was really fun i'm like can i make you an incentive and he's like yes of course Amazing. um so things like that you know people like you want to do stuff that your community wants to see and maybe you necessarily don't want to do like those beans i'm never going to do that again by the way it was terrible <laughs> There, they have, there's just like one flavor i think it's called stink bug and i almost threw up Ooh. on camera like it was Ooh. that bad is wow. that bad <laughs> um yeah grace is like the beans the beans y'all th these are it they're five dollars on amazon i mean it will help you raise a lot of money i think i raised a thousand dollars that day um but they said what cost yeah <laughs> <laughs> the cost of my stomach <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm, for sure for sure i wanted to ask actually um mm -hmm. what kind of games or, or what um in addition to the uh donation tiers and incentives uh what were you kind of like doing during the stream what kind of games were you playing who you were sure to? so um i had every intention during the india stream to um Anna Maria and I on Sundays at that day, at that moment, we were going through the board game geek top 100 and just giving our opinions of it. We're very opinionated. We love games. We've played a lot of them. And so we wanted to see like, what do you think about this game? Does it really need to be number five? Maybe not. Like this theme is kind of weird. Let's talk about it. So we, I thought it was going to be like a two, three episodes kind of stream. It took two months because we would sometimes only get through 10 games in two hours. Sometimes mm -hmm. we get through 15 games in two hours. So my plan was just to keep doing that and in between ask for donations. But that was not even possible. I, I streamed for four hours that night because we kept raising more and more and more money. But mm -hmm the donations came in so fast so quickly and i was just thanking people and people were just like talking about it and i was like telling my story a few times that there was no time to do anything else for four hours it was just me yeah. like saying thank you so much for the money and then also doing the giveaways i had like 50 giveaways to do so mm -hmm. what i did was i found a um a spinner online 
And I would copy and paste names every time for giveaways because if someone won a giveaway, we would delete their name and then I would to copy and paste again. So a lot of that was happening behind the scenes. Like what people just saw was a spinner pop up randomly. But what was happening was the, my mods were doing the spreadsheets. And then on my end, I had to copy and paste and put it into the spinner and then spin it on camera and people love seeing the spinner it was instant gratification because the spinner also like did confetti when someone's mm. name got called out so like people like that so that was fun energy. yeah <laughs> um james says people sometimes get discouraged and not always donate if the thing is small amount is worthwhile but if it's one to two five dollar donations and this, yeah like if you do small donations they can totally totally pile up for sure yes the auctions um mm. What James is talking about is that on my Twitch channel, I have a butt, cat butt emote, uh, which is based off of my cat. Um, so I call it the Kai butt emote, and it's really cute. And um, before the stream, we had planned to do a Bobby Squash um, watercolor auction. What that means is, so Ross from More Games, please, has a squash called Bobby Squash and we we're like it, and Anna Maria is an artist and we we're like this would be fun to do like an auction off like where Anna Maria will do a Bobby Squash watercolor if that doesn't make any sense to you basically she was like I'm going to make this cool um piece of art based on a character that most board game Twitch streamers know about mm -hmm. um and we asked Ross for permission he's like yeah like if Bobby Squatch can help raise money for charity. Why not? So we always plan to do one auction and that was going to be our auction. Just something fun to like raise a few hundred dollars. It raised a lot of money. And then I think I said as a joke or something like we should do an auction for Kai's cat butt emo and people just latched onto that. So we said, okay, let's do it. So we, we auctioned off. And, and that was really fun because I have never done auctioning, but I put on my best auctioner voice and be like, okay, we got $1, we got $5, we got $100, you know, like things like that. And people really thought that was really fun. So it kept, people kept saying more and more money. And I think ultimately someone from Board Game Geek paid like $500 for Kai's butt Yo. watercolor painting. And then, and then the best thing happened, people started messaging me separately. And because I had my phone next to me, I was able to see these notifications. Like mm. Beth Sobel, the amazing uh, board game um, artist, she reached out. She's like, hey, like I'll, I can auction off an hour of my time uh, for like an art. Someone, someone else like Amanda Pan is like, I can make a um, like crochet, like Kai butt emo. Someone else that I can make a plushy meeple plushy. Someone else that I can make a, a perler bead of Kai's butt. Like, so like all of these people were like willing to like, you know, basically donate their time and to mm. make these um, incredible prizes. And people really responded to that. So we just started doing like super random auctions. Um, Tim Fowers like did like, we well, can auction off a few of my games. Like it was just incredible. And then Daryl Andrews who has made Sagrada, um, mm. he's like, I'll send a signed copy of Sagrada and all its expansions as an auction. Like, uh. It was incredible. It was just like, these were literally real time. Like these were not planned auctions. People were literally messaging me. So that's what I did for four hours. Like people were messaging me. We were doing random auctions and that's how it happened. Yeah, to spin um, all those plates simultaneously while live is really, really impressive. Yes. So it, it was like literally me, like on my phone responding, but also talking to the video. And then thankfully, like Anna Maria is like such a good host. Like we have like really good chemistry. Like she's like one of my best friends. So like while I was like trying to deal with that, she would talk to the audience. So like if I if it was just me, I do think it would be a little harder because like juggling all of those balls is a lot. But having a co-host with you for something like a charity program is really helpful. And I highly recommend it. Um, mm -hmm. But so basically, I, w I also wanted to mention when you're doing a charity stream, it really helps to um, share like facts and figures. So like, you know, when I was trying to do it, be like, you know, India's COVID rate is like X, Y and Z. Like this is like my family. I It's 20 people in my family have been affected like. And then that kind of ties into sharing personal stories. Like I share like how my, I've been personally affected by this. And I think when you share facts and figures and personal stories, it makes people more invested into your charity cause because they want to help you. Like hopefully you're a good person and they want to help you. And so like, 
I think that helps when you're trying to do a charity stream. If you like bring mm -hmm. the person into it, like bring yourself into it and why you're raising it money for that cause. Hmm. But yeah, that's I, mostly it. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I have a, a, a well, I, uh, we in general uh, take, take questions both from um, our, yes. our live chat and also on our Discord, which I should probably make sure I have in eyeline. That would be a good <laughs> idea. But in the meantime, I'm really interested to kind of know, um, because I also stream stuff in the worlds of tabletop RPGs rather than board games. Uh, I'm really interested to kind of know some of the, I guess, like technical setups of those bits and pieces. Uh, you were talking about having this information as kind of like overlays and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, what is, um, what, what kind of like technical advice for people who might be really interested in doing a charity stream, but have less experience on the streaming side of things, like that side of things, what kind of advice would you give? Sure. So my experience is like Twitch particularly. So for my broadcasting software, I use Streamlab OBS because mm -hmm. it's a very friendly starter broadcast software. I think I am ready to graduate to other software, but I like, I, I've been using it for six months because it is so user friendly and there's and YouTube is your friend, y'all. There is so many good people out there dispensing advice and being like, like, I want to figure out how do I incorporate this image? And I like Googled it and I was able to like figure it out. And like, that is so helpful. Like you're not gonna know all the answers, but someone out there knows the answers. So Google it, honestly, like Google is your friend. But my piece of advice, if you wanna do the charity stream is use a platform that will work with Twitch, Tiltify. That will make your life so much easier. I think that's one piece of advice. If you wanna do a charity stream, use something that integrates with the streaming platform that you're using. Yeah, as I recall, Streamlabs OBS even has dedicated alerts for Tiltify. So it's that yeah. level, level of comparison. Exactly. Um, you were talking a little bit about the uh, people that you were collaborating with and with Board Game Geek as a whole, which mm -hmm. is amazing and it's super great that they, you know, they're supporting everybody. In that yeah, it was really world. nice. Um, what kind of, um, since you're, you you were talking a little bit about, you know, what you would be doing next time, or maybe if you were doing this again, um, what other ways do you think you might connect with other kind of people in the board game space? Sure. sure um, I, like I said, more than five days please don't do that to yourself <laughs> <For sure. laughs> i would start planning um a few months in advance and i would still reach out to as many people as i did but i will also probably reach out to more people i also add, do more calls for actions on twitter for example like i tweeted about it after i already had some sponsors being like hey we're looking for more sponsors i would probably send out more tweets being like we're looking for sponsors for this event who's interested mm -hmm. um i have been i have a, a lot of uh twitter followers at this point and connections mm -hmm. in the industry so that is obviously helpful um but i didn't get there automatically right you know it's just it's interacting with people you know organically it's you know when you interact with people on social media and like you like what they do they like what you do um it's helpful to like build connections that way um but if you're starting off like super new i my suggestion is like when you reach out be very professional because um companies and i hear this all the time companies get so many emails from like content creators um so like don't give them a wall of text bullet points help and just like in your first few lines be really clear about what you're asking for don't put it as the last sentence of your email um mm -hmm. i used to be an attorney and i think that helps uh like me when i write the emails it's because mm -hmm. like you just want to make sure you're very concise and get your point across for sure for sure uh grace has an additional question i was really interested to hear that you turned down game donations at a certain point how did you recognize when you'd had quote unquote enough to me i honestly wanted to stop after 30 game donations because i was like you know if we have 10 game giveaways that'll be really cool but then it kind of like snowballed and because mm. uh, Anna and, and i were both contacting people and we would like talk at the end of the day we kind of had more than i wanted 30 was just kind of like an arbitrary number because I thought 30 game giveaways to like say 30 is like a lot. Mm -hmm. um, also, my whole point was to raise money. Um, so I was just like, if a company is okay with like giving money and I can, and I will still say that they're a sponsor, isn't that, isn't that better? Like I can mm -hmm. raise even more money. So it was very like arbitrary in my head. It wasn't like, 
there was like a specific number. I just felt that 30 was enough, but we ended up with 50. And then after we had 50, I was like, okay, absolutely no more games. Like no more games. We're not doing any more games. Like I don't want to do, because we had to do 50 game giveaways. Like that's why it took four hours. I had to do 50 mm -hmm. game giveaways because it was like one at a time. <laughs> sure. And you were doing all of that by hand as well. since you Yes, I was. Well. I yeah. did. I did find that cool spinner that I told you about online. Mm -hmm. Just Google like spinner or something. And that was fun. Like it, it, mm -hmm. I love the one confetti like because it was like, yeah, you won something. <laughs> sure, um, sure. Uh, to ask about um, actually in talking about that kind of level of endurance and operating within your means, because you could easily shoot for 100 giveaways, but you're but one person. And, you know, you yeah. wanna, uh, if you destroy yourself, you can't do the charity thing. Um, exactly. Streaming for, for four hours is actually, uh, I mean, there are some streamers who are out there streaming for like 12 hours at a time. But four hours is something of a marathon. Is there anything that you were kind of like doing to keep yourself going that you would maybe do in the future if you're doing other streams of that length? Um, I It was helpful that I had someone in my house to give me water periodically, <laughs> stay sure. hydrated for sure. Um, I only intended to do two hours. It's just like my usual stream time. But we kept having donations rolling in that I just did. I was like, well, if people are still going to be donating, I'm not going to um, like stop it. Also, I kept changing my donation goal because you can yeah. do that in my broadcasting software. So as soon as I met that goal, I was like, well, let's do a new goal. I changed my goal, I think, four times. So originally it was 2,500, then we changed it to 5,000, but we met 5,000 in the first 30 minutes, the first mm -hmm. 30 minutes. So then I think I changed it to 7,000. Like maybe I changed it more than four times because like I was very nervous. Like I didn't want to like reach for the moon while Anna Maria was like, do more, do more, do more. And I'm just like, no, this is too much, too much. We can't ask you, we can't do too many eggs. Like I had just done a charity stream. Like I didn't want to like seem greedy, even though this money isn't mm. for me, it was for charity. I still mm. felt like bad asking for people to donate so quickly after I had just done a stream. Sure. Um, but people wanted to donate for a good cause. And so we just kept increasing it. At a certain point it was 15,000 and we met that I'm like, then we I think we said screw it let's let's just shoot for seventeen thousand and I think for that last two thousand it took a little bit more time so we mm -hmm. kept streaming we kept doing these auctions we're like okay let's do it you all let's do it and so I think that's also why it took four hours but mostly mm -hmm. it's just because money kept rolling in and I just didn't feel good about just ending it when we could make more and I, and I didn't have anything to do for the rest of the night so like okay let's do this let's, <laughs> let's do go this for, it, for sure for yeah. Sure. Uh, one last question from me, and then we'll see if there's any other questions from chat. But um, say you had uh, enough time to plan and enough budget to kind of make it happen. If you wanted mm -hmm. to do another big charity event, what would you kind of, what would you do? Uh, would you be streaming it? Would it be an in-person thing? Who would you want to work with? Dream, dream charity drive is what I'm saying. Um, I would definitely stream it. I love streaming mm -hmm. so much. Um, and I think my enthusiasm for streaming really comes across. And I think that mm -hmm. also helps because I'm a very energetic person. Um, I would still use Twitch. Again, I would use something a little bit more like Tiltify that's a little bit more integrated. I wouldn't do direct donations. Um, Anna Maria and I make a great team. Like, I would love to do another charity stream with her, and I'm sure we will do another charity stream. It went so well, we're thinking making like a yearly thing or a bi yearly oh, thing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, we have, we're, we're, we're talking about it. Um, I would, I would love to have guests on, but it's kind of hard to just like add and subtract guests sometimes mm -hmm. so we'll see uh, like so i kind of did my dream stream by accident to be honest with you for sure absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. and again congratulations the fact that um, one of the auctions earned enough money to get one of the oxygen machines in one is super impressive Thanks. Uh, um, we have one more from Grace. Uh, for both Benita and Nathan, if you want to answer, uh, what are other examples of people using their platforms for good in the tabletop community that you have been inspired by? Sure. So honestly, board game Twitch is like such an amazing like community and like one of the more non-toxic communities I've been a part of. And I see people on Twitch like constantly using their platform for good. Like example, like I mentioned earlier, Charity Board Gamer, Dane Plays Games, uh, Ross for More Games Please does a yearly, um, I think Christmas charity event. Mm. Um, and like, so some of those people, like they're constantly doing like fundraisers on their channel, um, which I find really admirable. 
Um, I also, I also know that a bunch of, um, people also do like 24 hour marathons for extra life, which is like mm. in a few months, I believe. Um, I think like, you know, book of nerds, Amanda Panda, uh, board game blitz, they all do extra life streams, which mm. they are able to raise a lot of money. So it's just inspiring when you're around people who are doing good, you're inspired to do good y yourself, um, mm. which is sure. helpful. You know, you are, you know, the saying you are the company you're, the, you are the company you keep, I think is very mm -hmm. true. Absolutely. And, you know, these things uh, uh, live and die by the community that you foster. And because you fostered such a generous. I and, mean, uh, yeah, if I just want to actually touch up on that for a second, mm -hmm. I, especially recent events that have been happening on social media. If you don't know what I'm talking about, you're lucky. <laughs> but um, curating your community is so important. And mm -hmm. I'm very diligent about curating my community. I think because I have curated it, I'm surrounded by people who want to give, who want, who mm. are good, who want to donate to charity. And that's really helpful. Um, when you are building your social media platform, please do not do automatic follow backs. Please do not mm. just accept any person. Just look at their, pla uh, look at their profile. Like just scroll down. Are they like retweeting alt right things? Like, do you really want that person to be a member of your community? Just, mm -hmm. it, just something to think about it. Curing your community is so important. And I know when you're a small time creator, I'm still a small time creator. It's so cool seeing like all your follower numbers get high, but mm -hmm. you want to make sure it's by people you want to be a part of your community. Not everyone should be a part of your community. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, to, to add to that, uh, if um, the board game community is like the tabletop RPG community that operate a lot through Twitter, uh, the Shinigami mm -hmm. Eyes browser extension is very, very useful uh, for weeding out uh, certain types of bad actors. Uh, that, that the, is what, what, what is the app? You, what's it called? Shinigami Eyes, uh, which I will type into chat as well. Okay. Shinigami Eyes, uh, named after the, the thing in Death Note. Um, oh, where, where okay. characters could be when the I, I think in the in in that work it's uh, having to sh to have shinigami eyes is to see uh, the date that people die because it's that kind of thing. Uh, but within the nature of Twitter, it highlights people who are um, reported to be really uh, beneficial to the LGBT community and the people who are specifically heavy detractors of the the lgbt community and will highlight oh that's really interesting their, okay their name and stuff so you can kind of see immediately at a glance as somebody has a habit of posting um things that are particularly bigoted um i think it kind of it stretches onto other isms as well but i know for okay. sure it was built with that in mind um to answer grace's question on my side uh, a lot of my involvement in the tabletop space is very digital rather than physical so also i stream a lot uh, i've i've done um uh, my own charity drive streams before for special effect which is a british based charity in terms of making assistive technology for gamers um but um, I have seen and really enjoy the um, charity drives on itch.io, uh, the digital platform that is used to both sell both games and is really, really popular oh, yeah. with the tabletop RPG community in terms of being able to distribute work and have you know good payment schemes and similar um in recent memory they've had the bundle for racial justice last year yeah. which raised i think five million dollars via... that's amazing mm. um i recently bought the um palestine bundle as well yes. yeah one of my games was in that actually oh that's so cool <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah so mini soft plug but you know um a game uh, era in terror uh, which uh, is translates to holy entrails where everybody plays as a, a divine chef um who Ooh. goes out and turns divine beasts into divine feasts uh, to be able to feed and support their community uh, like That's a, very a fusion cool. of monster hunter and overcooked <laughs> which we uh, uh i and uh, a co-writer um uh, ruben ferdinand we both figured that a game about feeding and supporting one's community was really a, a good tie-in yeah the, the i love that bundle you know <laughs> uh just checking for any so mauricio yes. asks are there better dates and times for these events um mm. yes i do so it, i it depends on who your community is, right? So um, my community is predominantly North America, American and Canadian. Um, and so I try to stream at a time that is good for both time zones. I'm 
like I meant like Eastern and Pacific time zone. I'm specifically in Eastern time zone. So I try kind of do it like in the middle. So like I started the stream at like 7 or 8 p.m. So like for me, that was 7 or 8 p.m. For uh, West Coast, it was like uh, 4 p.m. Um, so because, because you know, I, I can't obviously cater to everyone. Um, but so you have to look at like your people who show up to your streams and stuff like you can look at those analytics and that's helpful to see like where they are from because you probably want to cater especially if you're raising money for charity to your predominant um like community um and i think night times are great and weekends are great for charity streams because people aren't at work sundays are cool because most people are not out on sundays um especially in the summer people are kind of out friday and saturday evenings so sundays work uh really good um, because people are generally home. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I, I've learned to kind of adjust my streams to, uh, at least Eastern time, uh, yeah. to be able to kind of get maximum exposure for sure. For sure. Mm -hmm. Oh, this was super, super useful. I feel really inspired to kind of, oh, run, I'm glad. Uh, my next charity drive as well. Thank you so much for taking the time. Well, thank you. Um, for Thank you, Grace and Mike for having me on also. And thank you for yeah. moderating. <laughs> No problem at all. Where can we find you and your work, Benita? Yes. Um, so my Benita Core, that is my name, and that uh, my handles on everything, which I'm lucky to do. It's B-E-N-E-E-T-A underscore K. So Benita underscore K. Um, that's my streamer links. I am on Twitter. I'm very active on Twitter. I am obviously a Twitch streamer. Um, I also do uh, TikToks. My TikToks are like board game reviews, overviews, and like board game memes because I think TikTok is so funny. <laughs> and so I make, uh, I do stupid, goofy videos. If if that sounds fun to you, you should check me out. I, I love it. I love TikTok. I also sometimes do Instagram. Um, but yeah, and I have a Discord if you want to join. I think it's in my streamer links as well. Uh, Discord is great. Um, Another thing, if you're building a community, I really encourage that you have a set of rules that every member has to uh, um, adhere to and even mm -hmm. like approve before you even entering your Discord community. Like mine is short. It's like 10 rules. It's like be kind, uh, don't be a bully, things like that. But it's important because you want to show people as soon as they enter your community, like these are the rules that you need to stick by. Like I'm not going to tolerate like racism or anything like that. And I think that's important. Absolutely. Absolutely. Ah, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Right. I should probably close out the show. <laughs> thank you so much, everybody. Everybody, a big round of applause for our special guest, Benita. Thank you. <laughs> We've got to, to follow her on literally everything and everywhere and tune in uh, to the next stream, be it charity or board game or the next review. Um, because we uh, love to see more of you. I will be streaming Station Fall, uh, which is a Kickstarter that happened recently. But for Late Pledge, you can still Late Pledge. I will be streaming it tomorrow night at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time with Amanda oh, Panda oh. and the designer, Matt. So it'll be really fun. Fantastic. Right. Let's go close out the show, everybody. Yes, indeed. I, uh, once again, have been your androgynous Android game show host from the future, Nathan Blades. I just realized that behind me, there's all this, uh, like, echo absorption foam that I have been letting slowly grow from being flat-packed and haven't hidden for the stream, seeing behind the streams. Uh, but yes, but yes, thank you so much for joining us. Everyone be sure to tune in on June 3rd at 5 p.m. Eastern or at 10 p.m. British Standard Time for our next fabulous interview with Faye Onyx and her talk, Disability Pitfalls in Role-Playing Games and How to Avoid Them, uh, which I'm going to be uh, absolutely fascinated by because it's another tabletop RPG uh, talk person. And I'm uh, super fascinated in seeing another angle of that kind of thing. Um, if you would like to continue to ask Benita questions, we posted the uh, link to her Twitter in the Twitch chat. And it is also in the video description uh, so you can go and uh, see what's good. But for now, I'm going to vanish and say goodbye to everybody and we will see you all next time.